Deputy Healy, please. Thank you. Thank you, Kieran Corla. Uh, Taoiseach, uh, dishonesty is destroying the reputation of politicians and the political system in this country. Uh, and I have a question for you, Taoiseach. Who said this? The government has lost touch with the people and misled its own backbenchers. It thought it could carry out this attack on the elderly under the guise of patriotism, but it was more like an act of terrorism. The principle is simple. Universal health care for everyone over the age of 70. Those are the people who made this country what it is today. They raised us, nursed us when they were sick, protected us from violence, grew our food, and ran a proud civil service. And are we to repay them by taking away something which was freely given? And you're right, Taoiseach. That was spoken by a deputy, James Riley, no. then Fine Gael health spokesperson in 2008 on the elderly issue of medical cards for over 70s. And who, and who, said, who said this, T-shirt? Would you mind, Who please? said this, T-shirt? Elderly people do not want to be pressurised about means tests and application forms or have to worry about their property, their savings, what they have in the bank, whether a man from the government will call to their property <coughs> or if they will lose their medical cards. And you're right again, Taoiseach, that was yourself in 2008, <laughs> speaking, on the back of a lorry, on the back of speaking on the same private member's business of medical cards for the over 70s. And what, what Taoiseach, did you, say, did you say at the Age Action demonstration of the same year on the, on the same issue? Question, please. You said to take away your rights to have a medical card beyond the age of 70. I reject it. The cheek of them, shame on them, shame on them, <coughs> and not to be outdone. Sorry, Deputy, the over time, leader please. of the Labour Party, question, will you please? And, Thank I, you. and I'll finish up shortly, Kieran Corley. Yeah, finish up now. You're over time. The leader Thank of the good Labour good Party, good. Eamon Gilmore, said, "How dare, how dare Fianna, the Fianna Fáil government disrespect our elderly?" <laughs> Deputy, you're over time. Would you please put your all their lives, often this paid high taxes, time. Thank and you. only want the peace of mind of having the medical care if they're feeling unwell? Taoiseach, you and your government and your Labour Party colleagues are now doing the exact, exact opposite. And there is deep cynicism among the population in relation to politics and politicians. What's your question, Deputy? The question, uh, Kian Corley, is, is as follows. Yeah. I've, asked, I've appealed to the Taoiseach previously to reverse cuts on compassionate ground. You're way over time. But if, you that, if that appeal falls on deaf ears, could I ask him to reverse the cuts at least in order to act to protect the integrity of the democratic system by making good the commitments he made in 2008? Thank you. And uh, Taoiseach. Will he now withdraw the energy cuts from the social welfare bill? from the health bill and from the financial bill. Uh, your quotations are accurate. Your question is valid. I've already said the budget, um, as determined and, and, and adopted by government, uh, will stand. Uh, I want to make it clear uh, that the, uh, the, the question and the misinformation uh, and indeed, in some cases, the accuracy surrounding the whole debate about medical cards uh, is one that has been the focus now of some attention uh, for the last number of weeks. I want you to understand, Deputy Healy, that every person in this country who deserves a medical card will have a medical card. And, and, the, decision, and the, decisions, the decisions that have been highlighted by de different deputies, and validly so in the House here, are, are cases in point of where we as an Oireachtas, working with the HSE, have to focus on the discretionary element of where these apply. Uh, as you know, the policy situation insofar as cards are concerned are that discretion applies where there is a financial difficulty arising from a person having to cope with a, a medical challenge or whatever. And there are various degrees of assistance that are given there. Um, Clearly, the, um, the service plan produced last year indicated the um, change in guidelines in respect of over 70s, um, and obviously that's been carried through. So I want you to understand, Deputy Healy, 
that the scaremongering that goes on, that every person in the country is, go is likely to lose their medical card, is absolutely nonsensical. Any person who needs a medical card in the country will have it, and insofar as is, and insofar as is possible, those uh, persons or children or members of families who need aids and appliances or who are clearly in a situation where they need uh, assistance and, and, uh, and help, will, that will happen. Uh, just on fire information, I had a meeting with the, uh, with the uh, principals uh, from the health service executive about communicating uh, this to people in a way that's very understandable and that displays uh, the, the compassion and the sympathy that we know that all Irish people have. Now, I've got a number of cases myself that have been brought to my attention and that are clearly very difficult and they've referred these uh, for consideration uh, to the HSE in that context. So I hope, Deputy Healy, that all of these matters can be dealt with in an understanding and sympathetic fashion, and that I don't want to see uh, that, that courageous mother on the television who was on the other night in regard to her child, which, which child, of course, deserves uh, support from the state and which is now getting. Thank you. Deputy Healy, one minute. Thank you. Yeah, Corla, as, as usual, the, the Taoiseach uh, hasn't answered the questions I've asked him. Uh, and, you know, you'd wonder here whether, whether uh, maybe the Count Corla has a role in ensuring that questions are answered. But anyway, having said that, uh, unfortunately, uh, Taoiseach, um, any assurances which you give here that individual cases will be dealt with are of no value of no value because of the record, of your record, of speaking out of both sides of your mouth. That is a fact. I've quoted the quotes, and unfortunately, and sadly, I have to say so, you have absolutely no mandate for these cuts to the elderly services. You've heard what you said in 2008, both yourself and the Labour Party, stood before the electorate in 2011 with even more extensive commitments Sorry, in the, in the, area, question, in the area of health. Thank you. Now, Minister Taoiseach, sorry, if you're not uh, going to reverse these cuts on, on health grounds and on compassionate grounds, I do really appeal to you on the grounds of the integrity of the democratic system to reverse these cuts. Thank you, Deputy. These cuts are corrosive and they're corroding and undermining the democratic system in this country, the whole, whole area of politics and politicians. Thank you. For Margaret. Yeah. Well, Deputy Healy is aware that when the quotations that he, that he refers to uh, and before this country was not in the bailout situation that it's been in for the last number of years. That's fine. I said, I said, I said, why do we always have the usual suspects in the It's always the same people. They're not coming. They're not coming. It's always the same people. In the same quiet. I said your quotations. I said your quotations were accurate, Deputy Healy. And your quotations were accurate. But I should, I should also remind you that persons over 70 who have lost their full medical card have, of course, access to the GP card, which gives free, uh, free uh, visits to the doctor. And they also have the recourse to the drugs uh, repayment scheme, which is, which is important in that sense. And you didn't, you didn't mention the fact that 240,000 children under five will have uh, free access uh, to their doctors as well. I'm sure, I'm sure that down in your own constituency, you've met many, you've met many parents and mothers of children who will gladly appreciate the fact that if they consider that their child has, a, has an ailment or has a problem, that they will be able to bring that child to the doctor without having to make very difficult decisions as to whether to, 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 uh, to do so or not. I don't accept your, uh, your assertions that you make besides. This is a budget that is designed to get our country, young and old, out of the bailout program and to move on to a point where we can have an economy that's prospering, where jobs are created and where people can go to work. And as I said to Deputy Martin earlier on, every person has the opportunity, if they wish, 
uh, to choose a private health insurance plan that is amenable to them. And from a fairness perspective, the government provides a subsidy for every adult and child up to 600, and the choice is with the people themselves whether to choose a lower cost uh, private health insurance plan or a higher cost insurance plan. That's a matter of judgment for themselves, but for the state, from a fairness perspective, provides a subsidy for every person. And as I said earlier on, there is, there is a clear decision of government not to increase income taxes so that people can make these judgments themselves. Thank you. That completes leaders' questions for today.